Hey, thank you for joining us today on this wonderful, fantastic Tuesday. Uh, my name is Nate Perkins, and I'm part of the senior, senior, I am the senior pastor of Impact Church here in Norfolk, along with my lovely wife. We're just honored to be able to bring the Faith uh, for Day podcast. Faith for Today podcast to you. And so we, we've been talking about this week, and we're going to talk about it all week, uh, the importance of choosing life. And it's coming from uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30, where Moses is talking to the children of Israel. And again, he says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, and that you may cling to him, for he is your life and the length of your days, and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. Now, Proverbs chapter 4 is really interesting because it really, I believe it kind of ties into what we're talking about this week. He says, my son, uh, over in verse 20, he says, my son, give attention to my words Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to, those, to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence. The word keep their course means guard. Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues, or the literal Hebrew is the forces of life. So the word is really life unto those that find it. The word is health. We can even translate that word uh, from the Hebrew to medicine because the word heals, you know, the word delivers. The word really separates us from this plan or this cycle uh, of the enemy. And really, we, it requires faith for us to really to connect into this kind of lifestyle. And really, you have to trust God and, and believe God. And we know in Romans 10, 17 says faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so let's look over at 2 Timothy chapter 1, because, you know, that's that famous verse, you know, where God has not given us a spirit of fear. So let's read that one. Verse 7 says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but what? Power, that's ability, and love, and a sound, well-balanced, disciplined mind. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. Of course, this is Paul talking to Timothy, who has saved us and called us with the holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before time began, but has now been revealed, has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death. And brought life and immortality to, immortality to light through the gospel. So it got, we know God has not given us a spirit of fear. He wants us to choose and to operate in the spirit of faith. You know, Romans 8, 2 talks about this. He says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. You know, just like uh, gravity is always working, but there's a, you know, there's the law of lift when you're flying in that plane and it can supersede the law of gravity. And it's the same thing about the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. It supersedes the law uh, of sin and death. And so the word really, the word abolish really means to render idle. It means to be inactive, to be inoperative, I like this one. It means to be unemployed. Death is unemployed in the life of the believer. It means to de deprive of force, influence, or power. It means to put, put to an end. It means to annul or to cease. So Jesus came to abolish, to make death inactive and operative. I'm telling you, he wants you to choose life. He wants you to live in the abundant life. You know, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And so when we're talking about Jesus bringing life and immortality to light, it's good news of who Jesus is and what he did for us. God's plan of salvation began for us in eternity past, even before time began. God knew this, this time, knew that you would be here. It, it really blows our mind, I know, but God wants you to receive all that he has for you that he's already planned for us. And our job is just to walk it out, just to receive it. Don't fight it. Just receive it. And it really continues with the appearing of Christ. And when Jesus showed up, he brought certain things with him. And it came to us when he saved us and called us. 
So we've been delivered. We've been set free and we've been called. The word called literally means to be summoned. We've been, God has, has called us. He summoned us to this relationship uh, with him. And it continues as we live out this holy calling. You know, one thing is righteousness. Another thing is sanctification. So, you know, righteousness is who we are. Sanctification is how we handle this thing. And it's a holy calling. It's a holy privilege to be called a son or daughter of God. And it will one day show itself uh, in immortality and what we call eternal life. But let's just thank God for this season. Let's thank God for this opportunity that we can walk with God, that he wants to walk with us, and he wants us to walk in the fullness of his blessing and his power. So choose life on today because the choice is yours. Join me tomorrow for the Faith for Today podcast.